the enemy just doesn't realize who he's battling. He doesn't realize we serve our God. As the Bible speaks in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, and it explains all about the armor of God. Yes, yes. That we are protected as long as we put our full armor on. Yes. All right. Hallelujah. But there's something about the armor that a lot of people forget about is that you have no protection on your back physically. Yes, sir. That's right. But in Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, it speaks wholeheartedly if we put on our full armor, the Bible says the glory of the Lord is our rear guard. Yes, it is so. So the Lord got your back. Yes, amen. And when the enemy comes up against you, Know that you already have the victory. Someone didn't wake up this morning. But you did. Someone died last night. But you didn't. But you might say I'm lucky. You're not lucky. You're blessed. If you would stand to your feet and turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. Stand to your feet. Be obedient. The version I'll be reading out of today is the NLT, New Living Translation. The Bible says in Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25, One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into the boat and started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon a fair storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water, and they were in real danger. The disciples went and walked him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. When Jesus walked up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. Suddenly, the storm stopped and all was calm. Then he asked them, where is your faith? Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. Yes, God. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you just empty me of me and let your Holy Spirit have his way. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come before you, to honor you, to glorify your holy name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.
Before I get started in the Word, I just got to tell you that we serve an awesome God, and God has placed some awesome people in this ministry. My wife said it so verbally last night. The praise and worship team showed out. (laughs) They showed out. We have a tendency to show out when we're out. (laughs) But praise God. I thank God for you. Keep it up. Keep praying. Keep seeking God. And watch what God does. Secondly, before I get into this word. We can all see that Jean-Luc is with us today. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that he's able to be with us. Jean-Luc would like to teach anyone who was interested in learning how to play the violin that he will come once a week It'd be $15 to to join, but he will teach you how to play the violin. Amen? We'll have a violin class. Minister Jonathan is preparing to teach the youth, if they choose to do so, how to play the keyboard. And also, also to add to that, uh, I have uh, some uh, Pastor Jenkins' uh, son-in-law. He's a, um, we're working out on that way. He's willing to also teach any, any uh, kids that want to learn to play the drum. So we got we have a music team willing to teach. So we will choose a night that you can come. It's a fifteen dollars to sign up, and then just I mean, he'll teach you how to play the violin, the keyboard, and the drums. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has placed some talented and anointed people in this ministry. Well, if I was to have a title to this message today, in Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25, the Ephesians was just a prelude of just telling you that if you put on your full armor, yeah, that's right, that's right. the armor has nothing to protect you in the back except the straps. That's right. That's right. But in Isaiah, uh-huh. come on now, can I make it plain? Make it plain. All right. In the book of Isaiah, it states that the glory of the Lord is your rear guard. So all I'm saying is that no matter what you're going through, God got your back as long as you put on the full armor. Amen? Amen. So let me get to my message. It's going to be short. Usually they say it's going to be sweet. But I don't know how sweet this message is going to be. But is it yes? Is it no? Or are you in God's waiting room? Is it yes? Is it no? Or are you in God's waiting room? We have experienced a lot of transitions in our life. I'm sure not like the others. Some may ask, how do we arrive to where we are today? Have you ever asked yourself that question? How did I get to where I am today? We pray for God's direction. And he opens doors. Seek, knock. I told you I, we have a lot of similarities in this message. He opens doors, closes them, 
or he says nothing. He opens doors, closes them, or says nothing. When we are pursuing his will for an area of urgency to us and hear nothing, we simply wait and do what he told us last until he says something otherwise. So many of us go ahead of God. We don't like waiting on an answer. I'm not saying that it's easy. In fact, it's downright torturous at times. But we don't want anything but God's best. But sometimes we just don't want to wait. We go ahead of God. And when we go ahead of God, you might think you had the victory. Come on, man. You might think you accomplished what you set out to do. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you, that was not the best for you. Amen. Because God had something in store for you that would have blown your mind If you just waited on him. Our very best plan and strategize in our future doesn't even come close to what God could do with a heart full of radical individuals committed Mm -hmm. to him. Let me say this. When I was in my 20s, pastoring and doing all the things I was doing, going to our homeless shelters, to the jails, out on the streets. I did everything outside the four walls of the church. And I remember this young man in the homeless shelter, he said, gave me a nickname. And he called me Radical Rev. Radical Rev, because I didn't play no games. I got softer as I got older. But we have to live a radical life committed to Him. Many times we have sat in God's waiting room doing the last thing He told us to do faithfully, but we've been frustrated. How many times we sit in the doctor's office and our appointment's at 11 and you don't get into 11, 30, 12 o'clock and you get frustrated, you get angry. But when the doctor gives you the right diagnosis that you wanted to hear, then all of a sudden you walk out with a smile on your face. So when we're in God's waiting room, We can't get frustrated. We cannot get angry because God's going to give you a good report. And when he gives you that good report, you're going to walk out with a smile on your face, a joy in your heart, a praise on your lips, and honoring him because you waited for that blessing and didn't go forward. Whether it was a yes or no, trust God. It is in those moments, even while being frustrated, Uh that God shows up when we least expect it. And suddenly, 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 That could have been the title of this message. Suddenly. He throws us a game changer. Sometimes it feels like a good thing, while other times it feels like a bad thing. Just name a few of ours. I get sick. I can't work full time anymore. 
The car breaks down. The house we've been renting sells where we're in it. And it's happened three different times. Jobs open up or close. And the list goes on and on and on. In those moments of suddenly, we need to go straight to God. It is a faith growing moment. Trust is built as God sets us up for the next chapter that is ahead. Growing up, I used to love to go to Great Adventure in New Jersey. And living for God is definitely an adventure. You can't tell me any different. I don't know how anybody can just go through the motions when it comes to God. You just can't walk through those doors in the morning, sit on your seat, Look around, don't worry about nothing. Not praise God. Not give Him the glory that He deserves. Oh, yeah. You come in with a frown on your face which causes everyone else to wonder what's going on in your life. You just go through the emotions when it comes to God. But we need to take time to draw closer to God. You need to take time to really listen and yield to his promptings. When you do that, amazing things can happen. Amen. All the time. All the time. Not sometimes. All the time. Sometimes it plain doesn't make sense mm -hmm. until you follow through. Yeah. And sometimes it's, wild, it's a lot later than you expected yeah. Yeah. before all pieces come together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when we learn to hear from God, sense his prompting and trust in him by radically... Yeah. Obeying the adventure begins. When you can radically, man, I, I remember watching, well, actually watching the church down in Florida. I had a youth group of maybe 200, 300 people, wow. youth. And they used to come up to the front of the altar during praise and worship. And they'd be jumping up and down, raising their hands, jumping. They didn't sit on their seat, their blessed assurance. They would worship God, come running to the altar, waving flags. See, that's what I was used to. And that's what I want to see happen here at Loving Grace Fellowship. We got to be radical for Jesus. Yes, please, Jesus. God has done some awesome things as I learned to be obey Him radically. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be outgoing. Or even radical to obey God. I want you to understand that. He is just looking. For someone who is willing. To be used by him. He uses all personalities. To touch. And impact lives. He uses all personalities. To touch and impact lives. What does that mean, Pastor? That means you are qualified. Yes. You are qualified. 
I think possibly is the act of radical obedience that may bring about those suddenlies in our lives. Radical obedience grows fearless faith. Can I repeat that? Radical obedience grows fearless faith in our lives. To believe God for the impossible, life may throw at us. Many times, many times, hallelujah, those mountains that seem to consume us are actually this little molehills that the devil has magnified. Feed your faith and wait for the suddenly, for it is coming. Suddenly, what? Why? Ah, you want to preach, dear? Are you preaching? Preach! Go ahead, girl. Go ahead, Jay. Preach that word. Learning from you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Suddenly, what? God moves suddenly. Mm -hmm. He moves unexpectedly. Yes, he does. He moves when you're unaware that he is moving. Amen. And then it happens. Mm -hmm. suddenly, suddenly, you were saved. Suddenly, you get healed. Suddenly, you get delivered. Suddenly, God will provide what you need when you need it the most. Amen. Suddenly, you be called by God. Because suddenly is how God moves. Mm -hmm. He moves instantly. He moves unexpectedly. Yes. He sees all over the Bible. You will see it all over the Bible in Mark yes. chapter 5, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Instantly, her bleeding stopped. Oh, yeah. And she felt her body that she was healed mm -hmm. from her disease. Yeah. Matthew chapter 8, verse 3. Jesus reached out and touched him. And I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake. And the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner mm -hmm. fell off. The jailer walked up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted out to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called, a light, called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling. Paul and Silas... Then he brought them out and he asked, Sir, what must I do to be saved? Immediately. I don't need to see you. Immediately. Suddenly, the fire of God fell and burned up the offerings, the woods, the stones, the dirt, and even the waters in the trenches. And all the people saw it happen and fell down on their knees and all worshipped. Explain, exclaiming, God is the true God. God is a true God. You can find that in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 38 and 39. Suddenly, lives were changed. Suddenly, they were healed. Suddenly, they were delivered. Suddenly, they were set free and amazed by God's presence showing up and showing off. Suddenly, suddenly, good or suddenly bad. Mm. Suddenly good or suddenly bad. All of God's suddenly may not seem good to us. Consider a story found in Luke. We read that to start this message. 
It tells us of a time where typically every day believers in God face what seems to be an overwhelming storm oh, yeah. in their lives. Yeah. Let's look at what they did. We're going to reread that scripture again. Amen. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filled with water, and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke them up shouting, Master, Master, we're going down. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. Suddenly the storm stopped and all was calm. Then he asked them, where is your faith? Oh, Sometimes our suddenly might be an unwanted storm in our lives or circumstance that hit beyond our control. Life is unpredictable and storms will come. Some things may jump out at me as I read this scripture. Mm -hmm. Why God? God suddenly could be a storm that blows into our lives unexpectedly. Oh, yeah. Fear was the first reaction of everyday believers at this church event. They stated, we're going to drown. Mm -hmm. They went to Jesus, not first. They went to Jesus last if they exalted all their options. The boat was filling with water. That storm didn't rattle Jesus. He says, where is your faith? His very words brought peace to the storm. Whatever you're going through, Rely on Jesus. Don't let him have to tell you where is your faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. Not what it looks like, but what God says it is. It can either be a yes, a no, or you can be sitting in God's waiting room. My suddenly, as of a period of close, I told you this was going to be a short message. All right, right to the point. Because sometimes you just got to get right to the point. That's what I was just going to say that. One accord. Sometimes you got to get right to the point. Amen. You know, when I put this message together, I had about fifteen pages. And I said, Lord, we won't get out of church till 3 o'clock. <laughs> it's Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And I'm preaching on suddenly. And somebody, somebody's going to say, Pastor, suddenly we're walking out this door. <laughs> You're oh, preaching Lord. too long. Make <laughs> 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 <Think> a sudden <laughs> exit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bless the Lord. <laughs> so I already broke it down to six pages of notes, mm -hmm. which I could keep you here another hour if I choose to. <laughs> but is it yes? Is it no? Are we still in God's waiting room? Let me tell you. My suddenly. This allows me to make ask myself some important questions. I want you to ask yourself these questions. When I face the storms of life. Yeah. Am I rattled? 
Do these circumstances that hit my life out of nowhere fill me with fear? Do they paralyze my faith? Do they keep me from going to Jesus except as a last resort? Jesus is the ultimate storm chaser. The storm hit in the story above. Life is unpredictable. Will I continue to live for God even when the storms hit my life? <clears throat> Do you know for absolutely sure, what a, absolutely certain without a shadow of doubt, that Jesus knows how to calm the storms in your life? Do you know for absolutely certain That Jesus can stand, calm the storms in your heart. Sometimes this of suddenly can change us on the inside as well as the outside. The suddenly of Jesus changes things. Hallelujah. This one's for me. Suddenly. Suddenly. I said suddenly. Jesus can heal you. Suddenly. In the name of Jesus, those of you who are suffering from a sore throat, suddenly Jesus can heal you. Suddenly grief can be turned into joy. To be calm. Suddenly. Suddenly. Sister Natalie. Suddenly. You can be promoted. Suddenly. Suddenly. God can bring your special someone along to share a lifetime with you. Suddenly, he can make a way where there seems to be no way. He can deliver. He can restore. And he can provide above and beyond what you can ever imagine. Suddenly, For he is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And he will provide when you least expect it. Even when you're in his waiting room. One touch of God. And suddenly, there is a supernatural breakthrough for you. Suddenly, with that supernatural breakthrough, your marriage or your family, there's going to be a breakthrough. Are you in need of a suddenly in your life? Winds of change or blowing? <laughs> Prepare for your suddenly. Prepare 
for a moment of change. Yes. Draw closer to God. Learn to recognize His voice yes. and His promptings. Yes. Obey radically when He asks you to move outside your comfort zone. Be open. Be available. And ready for whatever God has next for you. It will be worth your wait. So what am I saying today? God may say yes. He may say no. Well, He may have in his waiting room. But you need to wait until he speaks to you. You need to wait for that good report. Sometimes you may think it's no. And I know that's not what you want to hear. But when his no is no, it is to protect you from what was to come. Because he has something better for you. It's better for you to stay in God's waiting room than never walk into the door. Come on now. If you stay outside God's waiting room, you'll never get the answer to your prayer. If you never enter, God's waiting room you'll never receive the victory that he has for you we gotta walk around joyful we gotta walk around with peace in our heart like I said earlier we're to put on the full armor of God. We need to say in His Word. Build ourselves up. And when the devil tries to act like he did today, you notice the devil had to run out of here. He couldn't stay in here. Because the glory of the Lord is in this place. I want you to stand to your feet now. Each and every one of you, children included. Stand up to your feet. I want you to tell yourself, I'm in God's waiting room. I don't hear you. I want you, everyone to shout out. I'm in God's waiting room. Come on now, say it again. And when you're in God's waiting room, yeah, brother Jonathan, woo, you're in God's waiting room. You're in God's waiting room. You've been asking God, where's the other musicians? When are they coming? He's been asking that question. He hasn't even told me that, but I just sense it in my spirit. He's waiting for other musicians to come. 
But right now, you're still in God's waiting room. And God says, continue to pray. Continue to seek me. Continue to ask God to sing spirit-filled men and women who want to play the instruments. Not just anybody, but spirit-filled. Yes. And when they come, when they come, Brother Jonathan, Minister Jonathan, not only are they going to be obedient to the Word of God, not only are they going to be talented in the instruments that they play, but they're going to be obedient to your headship as the ministers of praise and worship and arts. So I'm here to tell you, Sister Madge, you're in the waiting room. Continue to stay in that waiting room. Because you're going to receive the answer that you've been waiting for. And that answer ain't going to be verbal. You're going to wonder why there's a knock at your door. At 11 o'clock in the morning and you were supposed to be at work but for some reason you stayed home and at 11 o'clock in the morning you're going to open that door and there's going to be your husband with a dozen roses in his hands you've been in the waiting room too long You've been in the waiting room too long. The door's about to be open. So wait on that knock and watch what God does. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we got the victory. And I want to let you know that we cannot be discouraged. We cannot be dismayed. God's going to send those to this ministry. And He's going to blow our mind. Suddenly. Suddenly, Pastor Sean, every seat's going to be filled. And we're going to wonder, where did all these people come from? Amen. Hallelujah. So we can't be discouraged. We cannot be dismayed. We cannot quit. We cannot give up. Can I tell you this and be honest with you? I'm just going to keep it real, if you don't mind. And if you want to get angry at Pastor Joe, you're more than welcome to do that. I got some heavy shoulders. But I was ready to quit this morning when nobody was here at five minutes after 11. I was ready to walk out the door and say, you take it. See, but that was just the enemy. That was the enemy. I was going to put a little note on here. You got it, Pastor Sean. <laughs> but that's just the enemy trying himself. And if I can be honest, if we want people to come and we want this ministry to grow, we need to be responsible and be on time. Amen and do what God's called us to do. But 